very, very few people and very, very few organizations can clearly state why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make money. That's a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose, what's your cause, what's your belief? Why does your company exist? Why did you get out of bed this morning? And why should anyone care? What is your why? Why'd you even get out of the bed this morning? What's your why? Why do you want to do it? What is your gift? Are you an artist? Are you the talent that can produce something no one else produces as a skill or a product or a service or some impact? The life is worth living when you find purpose. If y'all gonna be great on that field, you gotta have a why. You gotta have a reason for why you do what you do. You can write everything down if you want to. Be brave enough to write every one of your goals down, but I'm gonna tell you something. Life's gonna hit you in your mouth and you gotta do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knockdown. And I love it. Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. I, he was stumbling. They were four, three, two, he, one. And ding, 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 saved by the bell. And he goes to his corner. The whole world is like, yep, that's it. Once he comes back out, that's it. Mike's gonna just hammer him. And exactly that, Mike Tyson came out like, I got him. I got this kid up against the rope. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up, you can't give in. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, I need you to do what Buster Douglas did. Buster Douglas start fighting back. And the world was shocked. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down, what happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, it's real simple, before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was gonna beat Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died. Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. When his mother died, he could die with his mother, or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is and your why isn't strong, you're gonna get knocked out every single day. If you want to live a life of success, a life of complete success, happiness and fulfillment, you must find your purpose. You see, if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know what drives you, what inspires you, then you have no reason to improve your life. How can you improve your life if you have no reason to improve it? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? What's the reason? Why do you exist? Do you know what it takes to be great? Are you willing to go that extra mile? I tell you time and time again, you will get tired. But if you have a why, we'll give you that extra strength, that extra foot you need, that extra hour you need, the courage. Why are you different from everyone else who's trying to do the same thing you're doing? What makes you stand out? Why are you so important? Find your why. Your why will pull you up when you feel like you don't have the strength to get up anymore. Your why will keep you fighting when everyone else thinks you are out for the count. Why? Who are you fighting for? What drives you? Your purpose is that one thing that lights you up. It's the one thing that will get you up early. That one thing. When you're doing it, time stops. Your purpose may be something you don't want. It may be seeing someone in your past and thinking, no matter what, I will ensure I never end up like that. Your purpose is always something that lights a fire in you. I will do this no matter what. My family is counting on me. My friends are counting on me. I am counting on me.
And you may even think you know who you are because you've been living a certain way, but I'll tell you how you'll know. You'll feel euphoric, you'll feel strong, you'll feel unlimited, you'll feel free. And most people, they're stating what they hope will come together, and if it doesn't happen, then they're disappointed, but they're not too disappointed because they're not too vested. I'm suggesting that you set aside time every day if you're not doing it already. Reading 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. Listening to audio programs, investing in yourself to expand your mind for what it's possible. And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. Winners win and losers lose. I love my life. Do you want to know why? Because I've seen the purpose. Because I have no arms and no legs, you're all listening to what I have to say. See, again, the secret's going to be this. What is an extraordinary life on your terms today? Getting clear about that. At this stage of life, where you are, where you want to go. It's about how can I find the gift I have to give the world? And how can I give it in a way that truly adds value? Not I think adds value, but the people receiving it, they vote with their feet and say, this truly makes a difference in my life. What I'm suggesting that you operate out of a larger vision of yourself. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience it, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. Most people are not really entrepreneurs, but they think that's what they should be. They think that's the sexy thing, that's the most attractive thing, that's the best answer. And what I say to you is, you've got to separate the vehicle from the outcome. What is it that's going to truly fulfill you? What is it that's going to give you that extraordinary life? What's going to make things magnificent on your terms, not somebody else's terms, not your father, your mother, your background? What is that really? Separate the vehicle, because there's many ways to get that vehicle. Nick, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. My parents want me to do this. My teachers want me to do that. My friends think that I should do this and I don't know what to do. And you're torn, man. You don't know what to do. You have to make important decisions, man. You don't know what to do. Who do you believe? The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution is you. I believe all of us have some purpose for being here. The problem with some of y'all, the reason why you don't give 120% every doggone time you get on the field, because you ain't got a why for what you do. As I talked with my friends, I made an astounding discovery. 80% of them were unhappy with their lives. The most important element is for you to be able to do this, to be able to establish, most importantly, where you really are in your life today. Where are you? And where do you really want to go? What's going to create this extraordinary life? Because some of you right now, if you continue the direction you're going, are going to be successful and unfulfilled, unhappy and stressed. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet, and it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter about the things that you've done that you feel guilty about. If you wouldn't do it today, you're convicting an innocent person. The first step is you've got to have a vision. A vision for what it is you really, truly want. A vision is about what you're here to create. A vision that really works is one that excites you. If you say, well, my, you know, my resolution, my goal, my outcome for this month, this week, this year is to lose X number of pounds, that's okay, but it's not very compelling. It has to be a compelling vision. It's got to have something that has the power to pull you, not something you have to push yourself to do. Those are two different kinds of motivation. Push requires willpower, and willpower never lasts. What will last is pull. Having something so exciting, so attractive, so something you desire so much that you have a hard time going to sleep at night and you get so up early in the morning to a rocket and take it to the next level. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And so what I'm suggesting that you do is to stretch yourself, that you constantly look for ways as an entrepreneur, how can you begin to set yourself apart from the competition? What is it that you can do that can make you stand out? 
Are you incredibly good at management? You really know how to manage or lead people. Are you an extraordinary entrepreneur that has, can take that gigantic gut load of risk and can create the vision and attract the talent that you need and the managers and leaders? You may have all three abilities, but which one really fulfills you the most? That you've got to find something that you love and that you master that. Henry David Thoreau said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. My mom wanted me to be a truck driver because <laughs> that would mean I'd make $24,000 a year if I went to truck masters and that would be twice what my father made. And she thought that would happen. But something inside of me said, I don't want to drive a truck. There's something else that matters more to me. And I decided I was not going to go for money instead of passion. And uh, the rewards have been pretty amazingly better than being a truck driver. It's not bad being a truck driver. It's just not what I was after. And I, I look back and one of the things that helped me was my original teacher, Jim Rohn, who's a personal development speaker I went to hear when I was 17. He said something the first time I heard him and he said, you know, it's really simple. If you want life to change, you got to change. If you want life to be better, you've got to get better. It's the only way it happens. And luck will show up for people and it'll leave them. But if you're constantly improving who you are and what you give, game over. See if you can find some ways to multiply your value to the marketplace. And he said your income will immediately start to change. See, if you go through life holding back, and most of us do, most of us, if we ask ourselves, have we done all we can do? Most of us will have to answer, no, we haven't. We've been holding back. We have ideas that we don't act on, things we want to do. We're afraid to take chances. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone. And we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. Up until then, I was hoping that the economy would change. I was hoping that my company would change. I was hoping that my paycheck would change. I was hoping that circumstances outside would change. And then here's what I found out. It isn't going to change. So then my question was, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? And here's what my teacher taught me. When you change, when you change, everything will change for you. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. So when you get up in the morning, that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. Change a question, change your life. When it comes to planning your life, I want to get you to learn to ask three questions now. The question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want? What's my outcome? What's my result? The word RPM, the first one is to get you focused on the target. The target is not the activity. The activity can change. It's what the, what's the result I'm after. If you know exactly what it is you really want, what you desire, what you're really after, clarity is power. The more clear you are and specifically what you want, the faster your brain can get you there. But if you're generally saying things like, what do I want? Well, you know, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar, get out of here. Whether you get the outcome or not, whether you get that result, will be based first, do you have clarity? And the second thing is, whether you got enough emotional juice to keep going after it when things don't work out. Did you achieve the outcome? Yeah, when you're that general, you may be, you think you're not getting your goal, you are. The way you language your goal, the way you think about it, you're receiving it. You know, you know, I, you know, I want to feel a bit better. I want to lose some weight. Fine, you lost a pound, you're done. When you get better, everything will get better for you. That's where I picked up that phrase, for things to change, you've got to change. You don't have to change the marketplace. You don't have to change the marketing plan. You don't have to change the economy. You don't have to change countries. You don't have to change circumstances out there. All you've got to do is look within and see if you can change yourself for the better. And as you change, things will start to change for you. What's the result I'm after? What's the ultimate result? What do I want out of this week, out of this thing, out of my business, out of my life, out of, for my body? Don't concern yourself too much with how you're going to achieve your goal. Leave that completely to a power greater than yourself. All you have to do is know where you're going. The answers will come to you of their own accord.
And here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Are there going to be some moments when you want to give up? Yes. Will there be some moments when it's going to seem like it's impossible? The pain that you're experiencing, the disappointment that you're experiencing, that you're going to say it's not worth it? Yes, that's, that's going to be right there for you. It's, it's going to be in your face telling you to go back. When we think about changing our lives, usually that means changing your behaviors, retraining yourself, getting new habits, going out and trying them out and changing your life. This is about changing your thoughts and then your life will change. Change your thoughts, change your life. Benjamin Disraeli said nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. Know that all you have to do is hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself. And I can tell you that it doesn't make any difference what age you are, whether you're a teenager watching this, or whether you're someone uh, in your 60s, 70s, 80s, or anywhere along the way, you can make that change. Every thought, every feeling, every emotion you experience in this lifetime is shaped by beliefs and values. All of your life is controlled by decisions you make. Decisions about what to believe, decisions about what to feel, decisions about what to do. And most of us are on automatic pilot, letting the world trigger us instead of taking back control of our life. And when you do that, just think of it this way. Anything you want to change, you want to change your body, you want to change your career, your business, your relationship. What to do requires the right strategy. You want to lose weight and keep it off, you can't obviously just throw your pendulum and go on some silly diet. You got to know the things that are going to give you lasting results. So we teach those strategies. But some people even know what to do, but they don't do it. And why are we able to get people to do it, to follow through? Because 80% of success in anything, my friends, is psychology. And 20% is the mechanics. What that means is there's how to do stuff and there's why to do stuff. How to do it is not that complex. And if you really learn from somebody who knows those refined distinctions, they can, they can show you those tipping points, those things you can do where in the least amount of time you get the biggest result. As you look at yourself as a business operator, as you look at yourself as an entrepreneur, as you look at yourself as a person that want to make a mark with your life, that want to leave a legacy, you've got to be hungry. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. You want to find people who master that because success leaves clues. And that's the same thing I'm suggesting to you. Whatever area that you want to go in, in finances, in business, insurance industry, whatever area that you're interested in, find the people who are mastering that and follow their example. Watch your relationships. They're nourishing relationships and they're toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships, they bring the best out of you. They inspire you. Toxic relationships, they drain you. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry believe, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. People that are hungry know if you want to be successful you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. If you do what is easy your life will be hard. Complain, point at your circumstances, give up your power, blame the government, blame the economy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. It's hard to make a radical change in your behavior. It's hard to take ownership. It's hard to swallow the bitter pill that wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. That's hard. That's hard. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life 
will be easy.